Hey everyone, welcome back to the Stoundcast episode 73. Yay! It's an easy uh, one, but pretty easily. <laughs> and that title is accurate. Oh, finally, we've got something to talk about. Yep. But it isn't something that I usually talk about, because it is Formula E. Formula Egg? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, no, um, yeah, so the Formula E 2023 season has kicked off today in Mexico. And nice. its newest team, McLaren, has scored a semi-decent result. And I say semi-decent oh. because uh, one car didn't finish. Oof. Oh. The other one scored P5. Ah. So, frankly, that's a pretty decent result for their first ever Formula E race. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, so big congratulations to McLaren on pretty much hitting the ground running in Formula E, because this is, of course, their very first season in the sport. So, yeah. just have to see how that progress goes. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, how's your week been? The week has oddly been productive. Cause Good. Been, I'm back. At, I've been back at uni. I've been making yeah. lists since I've been back. So, keeps me in line for just getting everything done. Yeah, makes sense. So, quite a few lists every day of just what do I need to do, <laughs> what do I have to get done and luckily there was an automated feature so I could just put, make sorting your videos out to be daily so that it just pops up mm. on the list every day Hey, perfect Perfect, but then when I look at the overview of just everything that is up for like next next week, next month, next year it's just edit video <laughs> so it looks it looks obsessive in a sense, but I didn't set it. I just <laughs> went for an automated everyday feature. Yeah. Which is why I haven't done that for the podcast, because I'm not having that looming over me for that being weekly. I'll that that is very fair. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's very, very fair. fair. How's your week been then, Cam? <laughs> Unfathomably long. Oh dear. I don't know why. There hasn't been any particular reason, but, but the week has just dragged. Oh, oh! I hate it when that happens. Yeah, honestly, my first week, my my first day back in college on Tuesday. Honestly, feels like a month ago. Definitely hate it when that happens. Yeah, and I, again, there wasn't any particular reason for it dragging so much. It just, it just seems like yeah. Tuesday was a really, really, really long time ago, and I don't know why. Hmm. Could be just one of those weeks. Yeah. Um, of course, as well, um, <laughs> Uh, the Rex Youth Parliament has returned from its Christmas break, so that's up and running again. And of course, as I said, I'm back in college now. <laughs> Very close to finishing the Microsoft Excel unit now. Oh, yay. <laughs> I think two more weeks, and it should be done. Hey, you'll be able to teach me a thing or two about it. <laughs> no. No. I mean, Maybe. if you want to, if you if if you want to be taught it all shades of wrong, then by all means. Fair point. It 
yeah, it isn't going well. I am not the biggest fan of Excel. No, correction. I absolutely hate it. Ah. <laughs> uh. So, it's one of those things where I just want to get it done and dusted. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And hopefully once I'm done, I never have to touch it again. Yay. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, the week's been pretty, uh, just really long for some reason. Again, no clue why. I just hope that next week comes around a bit quicker. It should do. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Possibly. Um, <clears throat> so... I have a bit of a Forza Horizon 5 update. Like, quite mm. an update. I have quite yeah. a Forza Horizon 5 update. Uh, remember how I said last week I had, had 12 cars? Okay. Do you know how many I have now? How many? 42. Wow. 42. The meaning of life is the number of cars. <laughs> um, but I did discover something quite useful that helped me gain about half of those cars. Um, you can actually, there's actually 14 cars hidden around the map in barns. <coughs> and I was able to find all of them. Some of them hmm. on my own, but in the end, I, I bought with real money a treasure map that gave you the precise location of them. <laughs> oh, wow. Because if you don't have a treasure map, you have, like, a really large circle that you have to pretty much scour to find them. <clears throat> it's, like, I'd say probably about five miles in radius per circle. So it's a damn big area to cover. And yeah. without the treasure map, it was taking me a while. I ended up finding six of them without of it and the final eight with the map. Now, the first two um, was quite, of, um, quite impressive. As the first one took me about half an hour to find. And it turned out it was one of the most legendary cars of all time, the Ferrari F40. And then the second car I accidentally found a few minutes later. Wasn't even <coughs> trying to look for it. And then I just thought, hey, what's up this country lane? Oh, it's another car. And it was a Dodge Viper. <coughs> you know, the, be the best cars are the ones that you find at random. Yeah. And then my most recent two finds... And the ones that I'm still waiting for, because once you've found them, you've got to send them in for repairs. Ah. And depending on how uh, prestigious the car is, it depends on how long it will take. But you can buy them immediately to rush the repairs. However, um, the last two cars, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait for those. As the last two are the Ferrari GT250 GTO and the Jaguar XJR racing car. The GTO, the 250 GTO is still at like 40 million to rush the repairs. So hmm. I'm I'm wait I'm I'm waiting for that one to to be repaired. I'm not buying that one out. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that one. Like, a lot of the cars I was able to buy out easily because they were all fairly cheap. But the 250 GTO, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. And I've also made quite a sad discovery about the, the F40. I can't use it in races because this is going to sound really dumb, but it's too fast. 
car. Yeah, I, I can't race the car because it is just too fast for its own good in a race. Like, I'd have to break really early, but at that point, I've already dropped down like four or five places. And I just can't race it. Huh. Yeah. I never thought I'd be able to say I can't race this car because it's too fast. Yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah. It, it doesn't sound right, but it is. Like, it, it was just way too quick for its own good on a racetrack. So that's just going to be a driving around kind of car. Ah. But yeah, um, 42 cars are now under my belt in this game. That's pretty cool. Just at least don't get them stuck in the belt. Uh, well, yeah, but I've also still got a butt ton to go. Yeah. Like, I have got loads to get yet, so... I'm going to be playing this game for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, have you done any video game in this last week? I uh, ended up completing the entire uh, achievement list for Edna and Harvey, Harvey's New Eyes. Which hey. came out in like, the game came out in like 2008. So actually being able oh, to play it again was quite fun. Oh, nice. Yeah, I forgot how quirky the humour was in it. But mm. it, took, it took me so long just to uh, get all the achievements for it. Oof. And I think I just realised there was a manual for it the entire time. Oh, no. You know what? No, I had fun doing it the route I wanted to. This is fine. This yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you played the game how you wanted to play it. <laughs> there was an achievement where I had to punch a man 15 times. It's fine. What? Yeah. Okay, was it the same man? Yes. Okay, he's got major blunt force trauma. Well, he gave me his D&D character sheet, so it's fine. I've just bullied him for his character sheet. Okay, uh, what in the hell is this game? <laughs> it is something that I found, that I remember watching a YouTuber play in my childhood, but I never got to mm -hmm. play it myself. And there's a prequel to it. The, pre the original game was Edna and Harvey The Breakout. Mm-hmm. Which then it goes to Edna and Harvey, Harvey's New Eyes. There's also mm -hmm. another game that does um, link to it, but the creators of this game ended up making a whole bunch more point and click games, which do which also have really not similar storylines but similar humor, which is great because their humor okay. is sarcastic but also literal. Hmm. Like, there was a man in a bee suit. Okay. You see him more in the first game than you do the second game, but still. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun, and I'd highly recommend playing it. What is it available on? Uh, Steam. Definitely on Steam. I don't know. Okay. It might be on Xbox? I'm not sure. Okay. I might take a look. If, if, um, if, I'll double check now, just to double check what platforms okay. I just said so many times. <laughs> uh, so it's on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and then computers. Okay. And then Steam. So, should be able to access it, maybe? Question mark? Should be able to. Possibly. Yeah. Um. So, we've both had pretty damn productive 
weeks in video gaming. Pretty much. Oh yeah. Um, I also started Sims Four again earlier. Oh yeah. Haven't done that much. Like I played about an hour. I think. So I've only really started off again. But I'm now just trying to relearn all the controls. Oh, yeah. As it turns out, it's been about two years since I've touched the game. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything you wish to talk about this weekend? Ah. Uh... Hmm. That's a very good question. Nothing in the hmm. entertainment that you can think of? Well, actually, yes. I was wanting to get your reaction to the, the revival of Phineas and Ferb. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I can't remember if I specified in the video how many episodes it was getting. Uh, I think it was 14 or so. Oh, oh no, it was 14. Oh, 14. Yep. Two 20-episode seasons. <laughs> hmm. To be fair, that's going to be really interesting to see what sort of stuff they're going to add. Yeah, because, well, the end of the show, it was all wrapped up. Like, Isabella was off to college. I think Phineas and Ferb were as well. Like, I don't quite know yeah. where they could go from where they left. But I suppose we're just going to have to wait and see. <laughs> we probably will have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, again, I can't remember if a release date's been confirmed. Yeah. But I am. I um. I know it is on its way. I'm just gonna check Disney Plus to see if anything Go has on. been confirmed. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um. Give me a moment. Nope, nothing yet. Hmm. No, right now it is um, confirmed, but it isn't confirmed for when it's coming out. Yeah. Which does suck, but on the other hand, we do know it is coming, so... Yeah, so I'm personally just really looking forward to it because I loved this show as a kid. Just shove childhood back in there. Just shove childhood back in there. It's fine. Well, that's exactly what this decade seems to be doing. Yeah. Like, I am waiting for the original Ben 10 series to come back. Please. <laughs> Or that original still... continuity. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I still got to catch up with a whole bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh and watching Pokemon because I know what happens with Pokemon, but then I also <laughs> need to find out when they release the next one with the new characters. Yeah. Ooh, here's a question. What are your thoughts on them replacing replacing Ash? I think it was about time the the boy ended up retiring. He became a mm. champion. He ended up winning a championship. He yeah. beat up a Charizard. Now, my opinion is, yeah, it was about time to really retire Ash. However, I'm not sure continuing's a good call. Hmm. I don't, don't know. I, because let's face it, you think of the Pokemon anime series, who are you immediately going to think of? 
Pikachu or Ash? Pikachu. <laughs> exactly. But 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 let's but let's face it, those are gonna be the first two that pop into your head. Yeah, pretty much. And getting rid of let's face it, both of them ain't gonna be too good for brand identity. True. But if they Because let's face it, if, like, tied in with if they aren't keeping on True, but if they aren't keeping on Ash, they're definitely not gonna keep on Pikachu either. Yeah. So they'll find a they'll again, do the Pikachu I'm, I'm not too sure how this new series is gonna do. I'm cautiously optimistic to an extent. Like yeah. if they do it right, it could work. However, when you've done the exact same th the exact same characters for twenty five years doing something completely new is going to be challenging at best. Hmm. So, in my opinion, they should have potentially re... Well, I'm going to assume this is going to be like a reboot of the show. Like, we're going to start with these two characters fresh from, you know, them going on their Pokemon adventure. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what they're planning. Which reminds me, maybe do we know? Do we know what region these two new characters are from? Oh, the region will probably. Well, we don't know the origin region, but we know which region they're probably going to be traveling, which will be the uh, Paldea region because it's the newest game. <laughs> okay, so they aren't starting off from Kanto again. Probably a good call. Hmm. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Could you imagine if they reversed it? No, we're not starting in Kanto again. No, no, no. Like, start off in this new region and end in Kanto. <laughs> oh my. No. Literally. The thing is, just though, take. The... <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's the thing, though. They've got DLC. They're yeah. trying to release DLC at the moment to try and connect. Um... I believe trying to connect Paldea with uh, a different region. Damn it! Give me a second to remember what oh, region okay. is. It's not Gala. It's yeah. It's not Gala. It's not Lola. It was ah. Oh, come on, because I remember it. Because that region is based on France. Ah, uh, ah! Oh, my head is now. Because I'm now thinking of Kanto, Dota, and Sinnoh universe. <coughs> oh, oh no! What is this? I'm gonna have to search it up. That is annoying. Oh no! Ah, Carlos, that is the badger. Ah, oh, Carlos. Yeah, because but... Carlos is based in France, and then. Paldea is mm. based around Spain, so connecting them up ah, would be that like something. That makes sense. But just imagine in the new show, that in the new era, they reverse the regions. <laughs> if they reverse the regions, that means we're not going to get any more games. Uh, yep, okay, see your point. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> although, no games no although, realistically, how many more regions can they come up with? Like, a, a this, pla more. this planet is going to be huge. <laughs> yes. And? Like, Jesus, how big does... How big, how big can one planet be? Look, they haven't even covered half of it, Cam. They've only based places around... Uh, New York. They have, like, Japan... Which is Kanto, mm -hmm. Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, yeah. I believe. Then they have, um, they have just New York, which is Unova. That makes sense. Oh, mm -hmm. only New, only New York. Um, Not even the rest of the states. Just, just yeah. New York. Yeah. Um, 
we have France from Carlos. We have Hawaii from uh, Alola. Yeah. Gala Gala is Britain, and including the DLCs, it's the rest of Britain. So Ireland yeah. happens to be an island next to them. And uh, Paldea is based around Spain. Okay. We still okay, have, so they the have... Rest of the world. I want to find Germany. I want to find German Pokemon. Okay, so that's going to be the next region. <laughs> Look, Russian Pokemon for Russia would be dangerous, to be fair. Pokemon for Russia probably isn't going to happen for a while. Uh, po Netherlands Pokemon, just mixing all them up. Yeah. Oh, hell, the entirety of Scandinavia. Yeah, just Scandinavia is a Pokemon region. That would be quite cool. <laughs> Yeah. That'd be quite a bit um, island hopping, too. That is true. Where else could they go? They could do um, the rest of America, which, again, really surprised they didn't do. Yeah. Like, the fact it's only New York, that's really surprising. Yeah, to be fair, I don't... Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, but to be fair, Universe is just like really good though. Yeah. <laughs> so, while we're talking about Pokemon, <laughs> when do you think the next game's going to come out? Uh, hopefully not this year, I guess. Yeah, hopefully. Although I have a strange feeling that um, the last release. Uh, Scarlet and Violet probably acted as this year's release, but they released it early. Yeah. Because they released it so towards the end of the year. Like, I can only imagine that's what happened. They must have done a, oh, hey, this game's ready early. Let's go. <laughs> hmm. I mean, let's face it, when you've got a game that is ready, and that game is a Pokemon game, do you want it sitting around in your warehouses for God knows how long? Or do you want to get it out? Hmm. Like, well, I know which option I'd be choosing, and I'd be getting it out there ASAP. Yeah. I don't really know, <clears throat> to be fair. Like, because it would be releasing usually around about now, wouldn't it? Towards the beginning of the year. Yeah, it would be announced around now. Mm. Actually, no, it would be announced in, like, February, March, and then anything else. Because if there was another game that would be released, it would be in February. Hmm. Um... But yeah, that's my guess, is that it was ready a bit earlier than they were expecting and said, oh, what the hell, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, isn't the worst thing, you know, double the Pokemon. Yeah. Per year. There's over a thousand now. Yeah, there is. Oof. <laughs> They've finally done it. Mm, you, know, you know, do you have like a top favorite, top couple of favorites? Oh, Pokemon games or Pokemon in general? Uh, both. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, I've never actually properly played Pokemon, so the games I'm gonna have to wait for another day. But in terms yeah. of Pokemon themselves, I'm going purely off design. Um, well, let's be honest. Pikachu is in there, definitely. Yeah. Like, I can't leave out our favourite Zap Mouse. I just can't do it. Hmm. It would feel morally wrong. Um, next up, I would have to say, um, Arcanine, because best boy. Oh, Arcanine is adorable. Uh, what, do you prefer yes. normal Arcanine, or have you seen Hazuian Arcanine? 
I haven't seen it. Oh, I have not. Uh, oh, I'll send you a picture of Azui in Arc 9 because, well, Azui and Growl have been in it. His Zooey and Arcanine. Thank you. Because Zooey and Growl is adorable. Like, he is, he is also best papa. Oh, they make the plushies for the Zooey and Pokemon, too. Cal, I'm gonna be broke. This is Zooey and Pokemon. <laughs> oh, no. So there's Growlithe. Let me take a look. <gasps> oh my god, he's so fluffy. I know, right? And then Arcanine just looks good. Oh my god, he is fluffy. Fluffy boy, best boy, girl, dog. Yeah. Um. Anyway, what else would like? So that so those are my top two. Um, third. Who would I put into third? Mm. Ah, no, no. Easy, easy, easy. Bulbasaur. D did did you mean Bulbasaur, the the traveling one that I keep with me at all times? Yeah, precisely. I have. Yeah. But... You know what? No, I'm bringing my plushie over. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the plushie coming over. I forgot about the Bulbasaur plushie. Oh my god. By the way, I have a Bulbasaur Funko Pop. Yo. <laughs> yeah, it's on my windowsill. It's the small, it's the like regular sized <laughs> one, but still. Oh no way. I also remember I don't find any more, but I used to have like a small figurine of a Bulbasaur on a teapot. Well, no, Bob's on a teacup, even, and it was so small and cute. I still have the Eevee one that Aww. I have at home, but I used to have a Bobsaw one. I don't know where that's gone. Oh. <laughs> but yes, Bobsaw. My friend. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my top three. Pikachu, Arcanine, Bulbasaur. What about yours? No. Ooh. Oh, it's... the thing is, I've ended up agreeing with certain Pokemon over the years, but then I'm now having to reevaluate because I have like different uh, tier lists of like favorites. So right. general favorite. One of them is Espeon, so one of the evolutions, because they're so cute. Okay. Like Espeon would be my ultimate uh evolution favorite. Yeah. I might have send you pictures of these in case you don't know. I was going to say, yeah, could you send me pictures, please, just in case. Espeon, I'm yeah. vaguely familiar with. I'll send you one anyway. But Thanks. <laughs> yeah, pictures would be useful. Yeah, so Espeon is my favorite solution. Ah, uh, yeah, I know Espeon. <laughs> yeah. Another favorite I have is like Zoroark. Okay. Which, which used to be a pseudo legend, like a semi legendary, until we found out that it, in other regions it's actually more common than the region it origin, originated in, which oh. is hilarious to be fair. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that's kind of funny. Let's see. Oh, he looks cool. And then the final one I'd have to go for, one I'm really wanting to like make a team with one day, because as much as I played the games, I have yet to use them in a team and just make it properly. Oh. Is a Gallade. Like, Gallade is like okay. top, top favourite. Favorite to the point oh. that when I went to a, yeah, mm. favorite to a point that when I went to Hyper Japan in like 2019, there was somebody who was making like little bead art, little like pixel bead arts of different Pokemon, and it had the um, Pokemon card next to it, and I managed oh. to get the last and I think only one that they made of Gallade, which was more expensive oh, than cool. some of the others, but I managed, 
I got it at the time because it was so cute. That is amazing. Yes. Although if I had, those are my favorites that I'm wanting to use in certain teams. <laughs> Though I do okay. have like favorites that are be are because of an me ending up using them in teams in the past, and it's just been like a running joke with them. Yeah. Now, what would you say are your favourites design-wise, or are they them? Ooh, favourite design. Okay, favourite design-wise are different. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna have to get the poke. I'm gonna have to get the Pokedex up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, this this is just the Pokemon episode now, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it happens. <laughs> how about how about this? Because I've played like I played on all the generations. I have played, although I have played the least amount of Gen two, but I still play quite a bit. I'll pick my favorite design from every region. Oh, okay. Because like there are some designs in regions that are just great. And then there are others that flop. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. So, oof. I forgot there was 150 Pokemon in this. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, 151 technically for, uh, like, Gen 1. Yeah. So, design wise for Gen 1. Hmm. I'm stuck between a few, but I think my favorite overall was. It's probably gonna have to be Alakazam because I like the Pokemon anyway. Mhm. Mm but its design of being like a psychic is really cool too. Okay. But I'll get a picture up now for you. Thank you. So for Gen 1, it's Alakazam. And it's awkward because I like using Alakazam on my teams, but you have to oh, evolve it by yeah. trading. Ah. Yeah, you have to evolve it by trading in order for it to be in, to be able to use it as an Alakazam. Otherwise, you're stuck with a Kadabra. Ah, that's not good. <laughs> no. Okay, Gen 2... There's a lot of good Pokemon for this, and it's when they brought in a lot of baby Pokemon. So okay. Togepi and Pichu came into this gen, Cleffa, Igglybuff, those sort of Pokemon. Yeah. And the extra evolution for um, Oddish came through, so that for Bellossom. Mm -hmm. And also uh, one Pokemon that I've used in my Hizuian, not my Hizuian, my... Uh, Paldean team, because it was right at the beginning, which is a Hoppip, but I nicknamed... Here is a stupid thing. I nicknamed the Hoppip Plantpot. Um... Yes. Okay. Plantpot. Because there was a Plantpot in the main character's room that was, um... a Hoppip, so I just nicknamed them Plantpot. And ah! Okay. That makes sense now. Yes. Yeah, this was the gen that brought in, like, more evolutions, too. Okay. Oh, so it is so... It's actually really hard for them, because there's a lot of really cool designs. <laughs> uh, I, actually, a real... If I had to be realistic for the designs, it would be unknown. Okay. Because they're just letters. Fair enough. So they're all the letters of the alphabet, and then there's the question mark and the exclamation mark. Mm -hmm. And you have to, and for a lot of the gens, you have to catch all of them. So there is the alphabet. <laughs> the alphabet book. Oh my god, yes! I remember him. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's really cleverly designed that they have all the letters and then just yeah. punctuation. So that, I'd have to say that would be my ultimate favourite from Gen 2, although there's a lot of really good ones like Hitmontop. Mm. 
Mm, fair enough. Gen, Gen 3. So that's where that's where Blazekin first came. Zigzagoon. Uh, that's where the start of Gallade's line came in. So Ralt, Curly, Gardevoir, but they mm-hmm. didn't add Gallade until Gen 4. Okay. And it also brought in Azuril too, so Baby Meryl. Oh. This is the Jennifer Waylord. Hey, I'm guessing that's going to be your favourite. Nope, nope. You should know what my favourite is by now. Mm. It is friend-shaped. Uh, that makes sense. Come on, it is friend-shaped. You... <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, of course. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. Feel is peak Pokemon design and nobody can tell me otherwise. Nah, I'd agree. He is absolutely friend-shaped and we love the fact that he can evolve. Oh god, yeah. So it can evolve into a Celio seal- and then a Walrein. But a really close... um design thing would be uh, Deoxys as well, because Deoxys is just cool. Ooh. If I, was, if I wasn't biased, then it would be it would ultimately be like Deoxys as my favourite design from Gen 3. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know you're legendary. Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, now for Gen 4. I'm not going to say Gallade is my favourite design from this one. Okay. Because... But there's a lot of different designs. Cher- Cherim annoys me thanks to his the Hisui region. Because <laughs> it, it was one of the last Pokemon I found. Okay. But then it brings in quite a few other cool Pokemon too, so Probo Pass. The legend there's a lot of like legendaries for this gen too. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know what's drawing me in, but my favourite design is Munchlax. Ooh, like the pre evolution okay. of a like the pre evolution of a Snorlax. Which I completely okay. forgot was, which I completely forgot was brought in for like Gen Four, huh. but I remember in the anime for when they were traveling around. Uh, I th- yeah, I think it was when they were traveling around, uh, Hoenn. One of the characters mm-hmm. in there had a Munchlax, but it was from Gen Four rather than Gen Three. Okay. But Could you send me Munchlax. a picture of? Oh, there it is. I love him. I know. He's friendship too. Yep. <laughs> Gen 5, this is where all the story stuff came in. Ooh, like, this is okay. Only, this is mainly story heavy. So if you're playing the mm-hmm. games, a lot of music, a lot of like backstory hinting. And okay. The two, games, the two games like Black and White and then Black and White 2 also bring a lot of... Um, context to each other. Ooh, okay. So, yeah, that's a pretty interesting. I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Trubbish and Garbo mm-hmm. being like, good designs. Okay. Because, yes, it might literally just be a bag of rubbish, but it's an adorable bag of rubbish, which they have managed to design pretty well. Oh my god, yes. That's trash, that's Garboda. Like, I love <laughs> the designs for me. Although people say that this is the least creative uh, gen because there's literally garbage bags, or, well, rubbish bags. Or Oof. just a... Yeah. Or just a plant. Hmm. Still look pretty cool, though. Yeah, or just an ice cream. There's an ice cream Pokemon, too. Oh my god, yes. Oh, I know what my old, my favorite one from this gen. Oh no, there's two. 
I'm oh, going to no. stick with one of I'm going to stick with one of them because there are so many really good designs for this Gen Two, but I'm going to stick with is my it... favorite one. Is this Gen Six now? No, I'm still not showing you from oh. Gen Five yet. I've just shown you what's Oof. cool. Favorite one from a uh, Gen Five is gonna have to be Kling Clang. Kling Clang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Wonder... Yeah. That looks really cool. It does. It does. Like it's a lot of gears, but it works. A shout out to Chandelure though. It's literally a candelabra. Yeah. Great. Uh, Gen Six now. Okay. Although I probably know what my favorite is already going to be because like, it's one of the starters. I'm thinking. Ah, fair enough. I'm just looking through them. Cause there's some really cute ones. I didn't know that there was a two different versions of Xerneas. What the hell? Surprise! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to look that later. Yeah, my favorite is gonna actually be Braxian. So it's one of the it's the middle evolution for one of the starters. And I, and funnily enough, I do have a plushie of this back at home. Mm hmm. But it just looks so elegant. Like a fox, but. Oh. It, it that is a fancy boy. It is. Okay. Gen 7 now, which is. This, this is the region where it's based off Hawaii. Okay. And it's also the... If you remember me sending you the picture of, like, the zoomed-in bear. Oh, yeah. That's the region it came from. <laughs> it is also high enough res that it can be my desktop. Hey. I didn't like the, de the uh, designs for this region, but... There are there are some really nice ones, but at the same time, it's not the greatest, in all honesty. Hmm. I'd have to go with a starter again. Okay. It would have to be the final final evolution of a starter, which is one of the ones I ended up choosing myself. So that would be Pre Marina. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Give me a second. So it's like a look. It's like a really majestic um, seal. Oh, yeah. Majestic level one thousand. Jesus. Yeah, and they're really good, I like battling too. So even better. Huh. Bonus. Yeah. Okay, we're getting close now. So Gen Eight. Mhm. Mm Gen Gen Eight was the British era, so of course we've got right. a lot of British Pokemon, like. Of apples. course. Yep. And snakes, apparently. Okay. And you know, just and you know, something that resembles a a chav for a bit. You know, typical Pokemon. Yeah. And then you have, uh, it's, to be fair, quite a few of them are really like cool too. Mhm. Mm uh, and quite a, there's quite a few legendaries too. Um, I'm gonna have to say my favorite will probably it's a mix, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my guns and go with um Poltergeist. Okay. Which give me a second. I will get it mm -hmm. up to you now. It is a floating teapot. Oh my god, yes. And the issue is, there is there is a really annoying thing about this Pokemon. Which, if there's a 1 in 100 chance of getting a genuine version, and the genuine version has like a small blue mark on, on like the bottom of it. Ooh. But it's 1 in 100 chance. And if you get that, you have to evolve it with a different item, which is really annoying. Hmm. Although I will say that looks really cool on its own. It does. I mean, the the phony version's fine too because it they just look exactly the same. There's just like a small thing at the bottom. Ah, fair enough. But I'll, 
One sec, I'll get you a picture of the pre-evolution, which is called a sinus tea. Okie dokie. It's a small teacup. Oh my god, yes! Yes. Okay, so... Should I include the Hiziri region too? Because they have, like, regional variants for certain Pokemon. Up to you. Uh... Hmm. I'm not going to include it because there's not really much change from other ones. So I'm going Fair to enough. skip to you on, on our newest gen at the moment. So that'll be gen, gen 9. Nine. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool things, including Gay Dancing Duck. Yes. Which was my starter, because for some reason not many people, um, the majority of people didn't choose, like, Quaxley, which I was surprised with. Oh. They either went for Play Coco or Sprigatito. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm sticking with my gay dancing duck who can kick me to next year. Fair enough. But there were some really cool designs for it. Like, I was really happy with some of my party members, because... They were all quirky. And Wiggler, okay. have, Wiggler in a um, terror dungeon just looks like they're having a contemplative mental crisis. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Oh, I've got to see that. <laughs> oh, and I'd have to get a picture off my Switch because I ended uh... up taking it on my Switch. Ah, uh, okay. I will have to admit, evolving a gimme ghoul is an absolute pain in the ass. Oh god. Because it takes 999 gimme ghoul coins in Ooh. order to evolve. And you have oh, to geez. find them all around the region. Oh god. Uh, yeah, I think what my favourite is going to have to be one Pokemon I had on my team. Mm -hmm. Which is called a Garganical. Okay. And it's literally just a cubie boy of um. He's a cubie boy of salt. It's great. <laughs> okay, he I, looks actually, amazing. No, wait, actually, no. His um pre-evolution is even cute. Is actually better. I lie. His his pre-evolution is so much better. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. I'll get the uh, Pokedex thing up instead. It's called a Knackly. The pre-evolution is the, like, the first evolution of it. It's called a Knackly, <laughs> and it's adorable. Oh my god, I love him. It's a small block of salt. Yes. So that's your favourite Pokemon from each region. Woof. That's my favourite designs from each region, yeah. Damn. That was just wonder what Gen Yeah, just wonder what Gen Ten's gonna bring. Yeah. Should that eventually well, when it eventually comes. One day. One day that probably won't be too far away. Yeah. Like, I think next year at the earliest. Yeah. Maybe. Or the very, very end of this year. Hmm. Like, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But we're going to have to wait and see for that. Um, so, is there anything else you want to talk about this evening? Uh, no, I think I've, uh, ended up running out of ideas thanks to the Pokemon. Yeah, that's fair. Um, let me just quickly see if there's anything I needed to remember about this week. Um, talked about Forza, talked about The Sims, talked about Phineas and Ferb. Oh, here's a question. With Phineas and Ferb coming back, what yeah. else would you want to see come back? Because I know I've talked about what I'd want to see a lot, but what are your what are your favourites to return? 
that you'd want to see? Hmm. That is that is a really that's tough. Hmm. Hmm. We can think on it. Okay. <clears throat> oh, also, um, what? Uh, just while we got a few minutes here, while you're thinking of your cartoons, um, yeah. I just want to quickly talk about how unbridledly happy I was when Commander Cody returned in the Bad Batch. Yeah. Like, ah! I, I, I was not expecting him whatsoever. He came out of oh. absolutely nowhere. There was no indication he was coming back this early, but he did, and he was pretty much his old self, which made me, again, insanely happy. Um, yeah, I didn't really get to reflect that much in the video because um, my phone kept running out of storage every time I tried to record. So I ended up having to try and get through it as quickly as possible. Like, the first draft of the video was nearly 10 minutes long. Oh. And as you saw by the end, that was pretty much halved. Wow. Yep. Um, so, um, would you say there's any cartoons you'd want to return from your childhood? Or general TV shows? Uh, not... Nothing I can think of on top of my head. Plenty of them that I would love to um bring, but none that I can think of on the top of my head. Fair enough. Um, in that case, would you like to wrap this one up a few minutes early? Yeah, we can tie it up with a nice neat bow. Awesome. So, thank you all for joining us this weekend on episode 73 of the Astoundcast. If you've been watching here on Stereo, please um, follow me at Astounding Cameron and Roxanne at Roxaroonie. Or if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel, Astounding Cameron. The sub button will be just below the video title. Speaking of the video title, if you click on that, you'll head into my description, at which point you'll see my link tree, which contains my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Stereo, and TikTok. Um, please follow me on all of those. And if you go below that, you're going to see Roxanne's YouTube, me and Et, and her website. And on that, I shall say goodbye, unless... Uh, because it was big at one time, there is like a small parody of uh, Anton Deck doing, doing like Pokemon stuff. Oh my god, and, Like no children's show. Yeah. I, mem I remembered watching like a documentary and I used to have it like shown to me all the time. Ant and Deck were dressing up as like Ash and Brock and Misty. Oh my god. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> on that absolutely iconic fact, I will see you all tomorrow with another YouTube video and next Sunday, possibly with another stream? Possibly. Yeah. So, possibly next Sunday with another stream, if not the Sunday after. So, goodbye! Bye!